In today's video, we're looking at a brand new product from EcoFlow called the Power Kit. Now you probably remember the last year I reviewed the Delta Pro and this thing became an instant bestseller. It had a ton of power and features that nothing else had, but there was still a huge gap in the market and that was around people that were building a van, a tiny house, or even a boat. But you might be thinking, wait a minute, I'm already using my Delta Pro in my RV or someplace else and it's meeting your needs. And if that's the case, it's perfectly fine and you don't have to change anything. But the power kit is more than that. It's a modular system that can also be hardwired into things in those applications. That means that you could hardwire outlets, even things like lighting or other appliances directly into this power kit. And wire is the key words. If you've ever tried to do a build out on your own, it is super complicated. You have to buy a number of different boxes, miles of cable, and then wire everything up. Now it's easy to make a mistake at a short circuit or even cause a fire. So EcoFlow wanted to do something different and they created a plug and play system. But the big difference is when you see what you get, you're gonna get better results along with a system you can build. You're not gonna have any of these companies blaming each other because EcoFlow makes all of the components. Let's get started assembling the system and I'll explain what each piece does and what capabilities they have. Now it's all gonna start with the main system called the Power Hub. That's this box that you see here and I'm gonna begin by mounting it on the wall. The Power Hub has a number of components that you used to have to buy separately, but the main one is the inverter. It's capable of outputting 4,000 watts. That's a lot more than many custom builds that you could currently buy. Another big difference is they include a template with every one of these items that you need to mount. Now once I get this thing on the wall, you'll notice there's a grounding screw along with these extra security screws. This has been really well thought out because if you're putting this in a boat or a van, things gonna bounce around and you don't want anything falling off the wall. With any power system, you're gonna to need to recharge it. Now here in the shop, I'm gonna do a combination of solar along with AC power. And this system is capable of handling 4,800 watts of solar input. But if you're using this for an RV or a van build, you're gonna be thrilled to find out that built right in the system is also an alternator input. You can tie it directly into your battery and you can charge this thing up to 60 amps of input power. And remember, you're not limited to just choosing one. You can use all of them at once, you can mix and match, or use ones when they're available. So in my workshop, when the sun's out, I'll take advantage of solar power, but if we have a week of cloudy days, I can use my AC input to keep the system fully charged. Now once you've got all that power, you need a way to use it, and that's why EcoFlow created this distribution box. This is how you can output both DC and AC, and this isn't just a mess of wires. This is truly a smart distribution panel, and it does things you never have seen before. And EcoFlow still didn't stop with just the electronics. They engineered a completely new type of battery, all these batteries are lithium iron phosphate, so they're gonna give you ultra long life, and that's exactly what you want in a mobile type system that's gonna be constantly getting charged and discharged. Now they offer different batteries. Here I've got two 2000 kilowatt hour batteries, but they also make larger 4000 kilowatt, so you can build a system with up to 15,000 kilowatt hours of capacity, and that's a huge amount of power in a mobile solution. But the best part of all is you're gonna notice there's no battery terminals on top, and these batteries are all also self-heating. Now they're not going to heat up anytime they don't need to be, but if you're in freezing cold or sub-freezing temperatures, these batteries pretty much take care of themselves. And here's another difference, you can actually pick them up. They've got built-in handles, they're easy to carry, and if you're wondering how do you actually make the connection, it's engineered right into the center of the battery. But they also include brackets, straps, so that these batteries can be set up in pretty much any configuration you're going to need. And here's some of the cables they include. You can see they're super high quality. They've got locking plugs on the end, and they've even got that braiding along the sides so they don't accidentally damage them. Another nice surprise is the plugs are actually labeled. These ones say battery, so I'm just going to plug them into the top of each battery and then right into the smart hub. And this is really as easy as it gets. In the old days, you'd have to connect a positive and negative. And then you've got to hope that all your connections are good, especially if you made them yourself. EcoFlow gives you all these cables. There's nothing really to worry about. You just plug it in and it's ready to use. And if you're somebody that likes to build your own system, solder, and do all the electronics, this is not gonna be something for you. This is for someone that wants to get a really high-end system that gives you all those custom features, but without all the work. And you might potentially eliminate ever having to hire anybody to do this job. And one of my favorite features they include is this touchscreen panel. This is something you'd only get on really expensive custom builds. And if you ever wanted to change anything, you probably had to pay somebody to rewrite some programs. Everything is integrated because EcoFlow makes all the components. They can give you total control and total integration. 
So you just connect the panel up with a simple cable, mount it anywhere you want, and now you can see everything that's going on with the system. Now how you mount those solar panels on your roof or on top of your van is up to you, and those can be very different depending on your application, but in terms of how you connect them to the system, it couldn't be easier. They include several cables in the box, but the end of it just simply plugs right into the power hub. Now they give you three different ports. Each of these ports can handle up to 1600 watts of solar input, but that third port is also your potential alternator port. So if you want to use that for car charging, that can be used strictly for an alternator and you'll still be left with a dual 1600 watts of solar input. All the solar charging cables include standard MC4 connectors. So while here I'm using an EcoFlow panel, you could use them with any brand that you want as long as they meet the power specs. As soon as I plugged in the solar panel, the system immediately powered up because it could sense the voltage. Now if you're using this in something like an RV, it's advisable to install a solar disconnect switch as well in case you wanted to work in the system and you couldn't disconnect the wires completely. Now keep in mind everything in the system is already working. I have not logged into the app or programmed anything. It sends the voltage from the solar panel and you can see the display is already on and it's reading the input power. And this panel gives you all kinds of information. I can make an entire video on this thing. There's tons of settings, features, and you can completely control the system. You can also control the system using the included app. And that might be preferable if you're doing a lot of customization. You can even do things like renaming the individual circuits. So you can make the system exactly what you want and customize it in a way that's simple to do and it's easy to use. Now at this point our system is powered up, the batteries are getting charged from the sun and we're ready to go. But in any type of a power system you need to be able to use the power. So now we're going to connect these cables to the distribution panel. You can have one cable for AC and the other for DC. But that single panel will allow you to connect up both kinds of circuits. With the connections made to the panel, I just need to plug the opposite end of the cables directly into the power hub, and now you can see that the lights are already on that distribution panel. Now normally distribution panels aren't that exciting, but that's because they're dumb, meaning there's no electronics in them or any kind of intelligence. This one is different. It's got a communication port, and once we plug that right into the smart hub, now we've got everything talking. You can see how much power is being used by individual circuits, and you can even control the circuits, meaning that you can turn them on and off. But the other feature is look at the fuses. They're all got lights so that you know when each circuit is working properly. If you've ever tried to find a blown fuse in your car or boat, it can literally be a nightmare. Here you can see that if a fuse is removed, you immediately see that the light is off. Now normally this panel is going to be recessed and there's a number of knockouts on it so you can run all your wires inside. You're not going to see them and it'll keep everything neat. In fact, you don't even need a screwdriver to make these connections. These connections work just like those Wago electrical connectors that I made a lot of videos on. You just lift them up, insert the wire, and now your connection is made. Now right in the app you can name the circuit. Now here I'm connecting up this DC fan to one of the DC outputs. I'm going to name it fan and now instantly I can control it right from the touchscreen or from the app. And if you imagine this thing in a boat or an RV, this would be really great. You could plug in your overhead lighting. And once you've made all those connections, you can put your safety panel over the circuits. You're not going to look at them and you're going to have a much better finished appearance. But you can also see what circuits are powered up and then the panel has power. The other benefit is once you've got your system installed, you can see everything that's going on, the amount of power going in, what's going out, and the history of what the system has been doing. One example of how customizable this system is, is look at one of these settings. Here I'm going to be charging my system off of my existing AC power. Now circuits in my shop are only capable of putting out 15 amps each. So I can set my charging to 15 amps so that it won't blow any circuit breakers. But if you're in an RV, most parks are going to be able to give you up to 30 amps of input. So you can easily just change that slider. So far with the system, everything has been working really well, but I still wanted to put it through my standard test. So I plugged in my Tektronix meter to see what kind of quality power this thing was outputting. And immediately I could see that the voltage, harmonic distortion, and frequency were all looking great. And it should be noted that that total harmonic distortion looks like it's high at around 400%, but if you look close, that's actually less than 1%. That's one of the best readings of any inverters that I've ever tested. You can also see that it's putting out pure sign power. And as I mentioned earlier, the inverter inside the power hub can output 4,000 watts, but it also has that X-boost function that can surge up to 5,000 watts. Now normally if you're going to build this in an RV or a van, you'd be hardwiring all those AC outlets directly into the distribution panel into individual circuits. But here I'm kind of limited because I've only got that convenience outlet on the front of the power hub. So I plugged an industrial heat gun into it and I was easily able to output about 1,800 watts. But there was only about half of what this thing was capable of, 
So I had to kind of hot wire another heat gun into one of the circuits. And honestly, this wasn't really the safest hookup. And since I just moved into this house, I didn't want to burn it down. So I ran this test for a few minutes and I got the inverter up to about 3.6 kilowatts or 3,600 watts. In the past, EcoFlow has been really truthful about their specifications and their output. So I fully believe this thing could easily output 4,000 watts. And then for a final test, I wanted to see how well the alternator charging would work. So I connected it to the alternator charging port connected it to the battery on my truck and then started up the vehicle. Now I could see that the voltage was going into the smart hub by going to the display panel. And this is when having this kind of touchscreen is super helpful. Normally you wouldn't know if the system was even seeing power, but here I could clearly see that the power was coming in. But unfortunately the smart hub wasn't allowing my alternator to charge this thing up. So I wasn't sure what happened and I reached out to EcoFlow and they told me that I did need to run the vehicle for a few minutes. And my guess is that because it was idling, it wasn't fast enough or enough RPMs to actually trip the circuit. And keep in mind, this is an early beta unit and EcoFlow confirmed that the alternator charging will definitely work for the production models. But this is a lot different than just buying a bunch of components. These things are gonna work together. EcoFlow makes the batteries, the brains and all the cabling in between. So if you do need to do any type of a build to a tiny house or an RV, this could definitely be a perfect system that you could customize and give you exactly the power specifications that you want. Now this thing is not cheap. If you click the link, you can see all the prices. And again, it's gonna depend on what you buy and you might think it's a ton of money, but it really is a lot less than you think. When you do these custom builds, they get you $1 at a time. You buy a module for 100 bucks, cables for 200, and you kind of never see the total amount that you're spending until the very end. When you price all that stuff up, most people are shocked to see that doing it yourself can often be more money than even a pre-built system like this. So I encourage you to do your homework, make your own comparison, and make sure you read all the specifications for this system. And just to be clear, if you need home backup power, the Delta Pro is still one of the best solutions you can buy. This is not gonna replace that product. This is designed for more mobile solutions, tiny homes, and places that they need a fully integrated system. And if you can use a Delta Pro or one of the smaller power stations, that is always gonna be a less expensive option, and it might work perfectly and meet your needs. But if you want something more than that, and you wanna use it in a mobile environment, I think this system is gonna really be a bestseller, and it's just impossible to beat what this thing can give you in one fully integrated system. Now this video could have been three hours long, and it's much longer than my normal ones, but there were just so many features that I really wanted to be able to share and give you a little bit about the experience I had while I was using the system. If you'd like to see more about it, leave me a comment below or give me your thoughts about what you think of this mobile system and is it something you might want to consider for your own build. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.